This dessert is over the top, decadent, and delicious. And it combines two of my favorite ingredients in any sweet format, chocolate and peanut butter. This little skewer is gonna give us a really impressive design on top. Want to find out what we're making? Stick around. I'm Greg Lofts, and you're watching The Slice. Today we're making a sophisticated, all grown up version of the ever popular peanut butter cup, but it's a chocolate peanut butter tart. Whisk together one cup flour, one third cup unsweetened cocoa powder, and a quarter teaspoon kosher salt. You may notice a lot of older baking recipes saying to sift your ingredients together. Well, we don't do that anymore at Martha. We just whisk them all in a bowl like this to combine, and you're also sifting them at the same time. In a mixer bowl, beat together one stick softened unsalted butter and one quarter cup sugar on medium-high speed until pale and fluffy, about three minutes. Have a spatula ready. You want to scrape down at least once or twice. Should be light and fluffy about double in volume and it'll turn paler. Another minute or so. Beat in one large egg and one teaspoon pure vanilla extract until combined. Okay, turn the speed down to low and then add the flour mixture. We wanna do this in a few steps. Reduce speed to low and beat in the flour mixture in three batches, alternating with the two tablespoons heavy cream, beginning and ending with the flour. When you're combining wet and dry ingredients like this in batches, be sure to always begin and end with the dry ingredients. Now here's a hot tip. We need to chill this dough and roll it out, but it's not going into a round. It's going into a rectangular pan, so we want to shape it into a rectangular form, and it'll make it much easier to roll out into that same shape. Scrape this all down. And it's okay if it's a little bitsy like this, it will come together as it chills. And in order to shape it, I'm gonna use a rolling pin. Shape into a rectangle, wrap in plastic, and refrigerate until firm, at least one hour or up to two days. Let's stand at room temperature for about five minutes before rolling. Get it nice and flat so it chills evenly and quickly. And I'm just gonna use this to help me out with the shape a little bit. That's close enough to a rectangle, I think and into the fridge or freezer until it's firm. It shouldn't take too long. Now, this is a pretty sticky dough, so I'm gonna straight away get some flour onto this guy, and to my hands, and onto the surface. Be generous, you can always brush off the excess later. What we don't want is a dough that's stuck to the countertop. On a floured work surface, Roll out the dough into a 7 by 16 inch rectangle, then fit into a 4 and a half by 14 inch rectangular tart pan with a removable bottom. Gently unfurl, press and tuck. With these square or rectangular pans, you really want to press that dough into the corners so you have a nice even shape. This is a very soft, supple dough. Push the dough into the corners of the pan, then trim so that it's flush with the top. Prick the bottom all over with a fork then freeze until firm, about 30 minutes. Line the crust with parchment and fill with pie weights. We're just gonna blind bake this crust, and if you've been watching the slice, you know that I always crinkle my parchment paper for blind baking, just to make sure those beans get into every corner and crevice. Okay. Don't be afraid to really press those beans into all the corners. This dough can take it. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Then bake until the edges are set, about 20 minutes. Remove the parchment and pie weights and continue baking until it's cooked through and dry, about 10 minutes more. Let cool completely, about 30 minutes. In a saucepan, combine one half cup sugar, one tablespoon light corn syrup, and two tablespoons unsalted butter. Cook, stirring occasionally, until sugar melts and the mixture is smooth. Reduce heat to medium and cook until golden brown. Stir in one and a half cups finely chopped cocktail peanuts, three quarters teaspoon kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon baking soda. Immediately pour out onto a nonstick baking mat, spreading out as thinly as possible. Let cool completely, about 30 minutes. Finally chop enough brittle to yield half a cup. Warm three quarters cup smooth peanut butter in a microwave until fluid. That'll take about 30 seconds. Pour half a cup into the crust and top with the chopped brittle, pressing it in to adhere. Freeze the tart until the peanut butter is firm, about 10 minutes. 
Now that our peanut brittle is embedded into the peanut butter, we're gonna get this into the freezer for just a few minutes until it's firm, and then it's time to decorate the top. For the ganache, bring three quarters cup heavy cream to a boil. Then pour over five ounces chopped semi-sweet chocolate. Add a pinch of salt and let it stand about eight minutes. The beauty of a ganache is that the hot cream poured over the chopped chocolate is enough to melt it. You just have to let it sit for a few minutes. And while it does that, I'm gonna go grab our tart from the freezer. Look at that, this chocolate is melted. I prefer to stir it rather than whisking. You can whisk, but the risk is you may incorporate some air that turn into little bubbles on your finished dessert. And I want an utterly smooth surface, and you'll see why in a second. And on that note, this peanut butter in this little baggie, this is what we call in the test kitchen dessert peanut butter. If you like to grind your own in the Hippy Dippy Health Food Store, that's fine, but do not use that here. You want a really smooth, creamy product, and you'll see why in just a second. Here we go. Is it just me, or does this have some major sex appeal going on here in this dessert? Now, to smooth the top, you can just give it a little shake, 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 like that. Totally smooth surface. Now for the really cool finish. This is a piping bag, but you can also just use a nice freezer bag, resealable bag. And I like to give it a quick test before I do the real thing, just to make sure. You'd hate to do all that work and then ruin the, yep, that's a nice little line there. This is no time to hesitate, just be brave. Get in there, we're making zigzags. Watch, it's super easy. Pipe the peanut butter in thin lines across the length of the tart. Now we finally use the skewer for the finishing touch. Watch. Draw a wooden skewer through the peanut butter lines in a zigzag pattern. It's so cool, look at that. Let your freak flag fly here, your inner artist. You're on your own journey, no judgment. Wow, look at that. And it was so easy. Into the fridge this goes until it's set up firm and then we get to eat it. Refrigerate until set, at least one hour, or up to one day. Can you hear the angels singing? I hear them singing. All right, I'm gonna cut this into triangles. Let's see what we made. Oh yeah, look at those luscious, lovely layers of chocolate ganache, peanut brittle, peanut butter, and that homemade chocolate crust that we made. I'll take one for the team and try a bite. Mmm, okay. Okay, bye. If you like this episode and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications.